criticizing Japan in state media is usually a safe play for the Chinese government. Given that Japan had invaded China under the leadership of the Kuomintang government at that time, and the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has long intended to install hostility in the minds of Chinese people, most Chinese don't resent the criticism of Japan by the official media dominated by the Communist Party. But in early February this year, China Central Television aired the following program critical of Japan, which produced the opposite effect. Japan's Fukushima Prefectural Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations issued a notice on February 7th to suspend the local sea bass market from now on due to the detection of the excessive radioactive substance cesium in the sea bass caught from the waters off Fukushima Prefecture. The Fukushima Prefectural Fisheries and Marine Research Center said they received a notice from the Fukushima Prefectural Fisheries Cooperative Association that the activity level of radioactive cesium-137 detected in sea bass caught from offshore waters reached 85.5 becquerels per kilogram. It has exceeded the safety standard of 50 becquerels per kilogram set by the association. On March 11, 2011, a nuclear accident occurred at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan. It was caused by an earthquake and accompanying tsunami off the coast of Japan. On April 13, 2021, the Japanese government officially decided to discharge approximately 1.2 million tons of diluted nuclear treatment water into the sea, with the official discharge expected to begin in 2023. On February 8th this year, Kyoto News reported that the Japanese Ministry of the Environment presented at an expert meeting on February 7th. It was a monitoring plan to increase the number of measurements of tritium activity in the surrounding seawater shortly after the discharge began and received general agreement. Since the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan, the production of agricultural products has gradually rebounded. Still, the amount of agricultural products sold overseas has dropped by 80% compared to the amount before the earthquake. China National Television criticized, even if it doesn't care about the natural environment, does the Japanese government not even care about its own people? If it weren't for the topic of food, perhaps many folks would agree in their hearts. Many Chinese people are hostile towards Japan as it has been intentionally planted by the CCP since kindergarten. You want to be a scientist when you grow up. What kind of scientist? The type that makes tanks. Why do you want to study weapons? To study weapons to fight the Japanese. What do you mean by Japanese? It's the Japanese devils. In the past, the Japanese devils stole watches from our store and beat us up. When did it happen? Previously. When was it previously? In ancient times. Do you hate the Japanese? Yes. You hate all the Japanese? Yes, I hate both good and bad Japanese. I hate all those who have harmed our country. One time I got a nosebleed because I hated them so much. Really? When was that? When I was four years old, I think. You hate the Japanese. Have you ever seen them? No. Then why do you hate them so much? Because they seem to have come here and done bad things. But there are many children and women in Japan too. I hate all of them. I hate anyone who has attacked us. But the problem of food safety is a deeper pain in the hearts of the Chinese. The CCTV program sparked curiosity among its people about the radiation standards for food in China's own counterparts. They went to check it out and discovered that the levels of 12 radioactive substances in various types of food set by the Chinese government are extremely high. According to the Chinese Ministry of Health's Standards for the Limiting Concentration of Radioactive Substances in Food, the level of the radioactive substance, cesium-137, is set to be as high as 800 becquerels per kilogram. It's nine times more than the level of contaminated sea bass caught in Japan, and even more than 16 times the standard of the Fukushima Prefecture Fisheries Cooperative Association. Many Chinese netizens have commented, I don't care about food safety in foreign countries. I only care about the meat, oil, rice, and vegetables we eat and whether the formula our children drink is safe.
Here it costs 20 renminbi to stamp a pig killed, and no one asks how it has been fed. The processing procedures are like a formality everywhere. Give a payment, receive a seal, and go to the market. Over a long time, average Chinese without a special supply have become immune to food toxins over the years. When the CCTV reports on Japan's economic and social news, the content is either price hikes or environmental pollution. Many Japanese standards are super strict, not only higher than China, but also higher than many in Europe and the United States. It's not cold knowledge or trivia. I can only say that CCTV's editorial level is too inferior. The CCTV report makes it clear that Japanese bass exceeds the standards set by the Japanese Fisheries Association itself, but it's certainly difficult for them to exceed the standards set by China. China has a high level of pollution, both in seawater and river water. The shocking images of pollution aside, just by looking at the manner of the staff of these municipalities or companies, it is clear that the awareness of protecting water resources is not common in China. For the past 30 years or so, the world has seen what appears to be China's economic takeoff. But under the management of the CCP, the social morals have deteriorated drastically. Food safety in mainland China has reached an unbearable level with numerous counterfeiting techniques and the proliferation of toxic additives. Their harmful effects are alarming. In recent years, there have been cases of tainted baby formula, lean meat extract, gutter oil, colored steam buns, toxic rice, and so on. Some netizens have counted that there are more than 2,000 types of toxic food in China. Look, these barbecues, sauerkraut, mustard, bottled water, potato chips, instant noodles, seaweed, popcorn, sausages, meat floss, etc. are all toxic. Chinese netizens can only lament. There are too many toxic foods to keep track of. You see these garlic sprouts? Don't eat them. They've been sprayed with a lot of chemicals. Don't eat them. Don't eat them. This kind of garlic sprouts are the ones that people grow themselves. They are relatively thin and have narrow leaves. This man bought yogurt of a well-known Chinese brand in the supermarket. He opened a bottle and saw water. He refused to give up and opened another bottle, but it was still water. Here the staff took the expired bread back and resold it. Not to mention the long history of gutter oil. This is a box of apples just bought. Whether it is toxic or not is not known, but most of them are already rotten. The food that Chinese people consume daily contains a variety of hormones, colorings, and preservatives. The residues of those various chemical additives and pesticides are simply harmful to the human body and pose a serious health risk. For the Chinese official media, the occasional crackdown on counterfeit food brings traffic to their programs. But these occasional reports startle the public. In January 2017, media in mainland China revealed that large quantities of counterfeit brand name condiments were produced daily in ordinary homes in a northern city, a district of Tianjin. Industrial salt, coloring, food additives, and tap water are mixed and labeled as a bottle of brand name soy sauce. These counterfeit spices are delivered by logistics or door-to-door -door couriers and are distributed throughout China. Investigators from the government saw that in the yard of these residences, there were all kinds of packing cartons, dozens of boxes of chicken essence without any brand logo, and dozens of buckets of black liquid without labels. A source told the media, even if outsiders want to buy the goods, these counterfeiters won't necessarily sell to you. You need to be introduced first before buying the goods. The fake spice dealers who are doing well here are also quite connected in the local area, with dozens of people working for them. 
It's an industrial chain that is well-defined, including processing, delivery, and procurement. The distribution spots are scattered. The total daily shipments are in the thousands. Three trucks deliver the goods, bringing them to various logistics centers in Tianjin, where they are shipped to the entire country. This place became known as the Northern Spice Counterfeiting Center. Investigators found as many as 40 to 50 counterfeiting sites in the area, with an annual output of more than 15 million US dollars in a history spanning more than a decade. Chinese media reports that no less than 100,000 people are poisoned by pesticide and chemical residues in China each year. Nearly 40% of cancers are caused by the food people consume. One phenomenon that has raised concern among population experts is the increasing feminization of Chinese men and the decrease in sperm count and quality due to the long-term use of toxic spices. The renowned Chinese academician Zhongnan Shan asserts that in a few decades, Chinese men will no longer be fertile. Chinese media says food additives are the soul of the modern food industry and are applied to almost 97% of everyday food. Some of the leaders in China's food and beverage industry are also actively researching seasoning packages. China's largest hotpot restaurant chain, Heidi Lao, is one of them. By 2020, the company had opened 935 directly operated restaurants around the world. On August 31, 2022, Heidi Lao's pork belly chicken soup is made of powder, appeared on Weibo Hot Search, sparking concern. A netizen posted his experience on the social media. When having pork belly chicken hot pot at Heidi Lao, he complained about the soup base tasting light. The server brought a seasoning pack and poured it into the hot pot right in front of him. Netizens check the ingredient list of the seasoning pack, which is composed of food additives such as phyllo, soy milk flavored phyllo, and sodium bicarbonate. After the news came out, many consumers said that they thought they were drinking fresh pork belly chicken soup and enjoying the original taste of the food, not expecting so many additives. They don't see it's the technological cuisine made up of various food additives that they are consuming. Later, many videos circulated on the Chinese internet telling the public that the beef jerky sold at the store may be made of frozen chicken, the sesame seed sauce may not contain sesame seeds. The meat you eat is not meat, the soup you drink is not soup. What you see is food, but what you fail to see is technology. In June 2022, a video blogger named Shin Jifei introduced the process of making a variety of so-called delicacies in his videos. A variety of easy and readily available ingredients plus additives to create a variety of common delicacies on the market. His videos are known as the Chinese version of Breaking Bad. Half a caddy of soy protein, beef flavoring powder, 5 grams, don't use too much. Here comes today's technology, ethyl malt powder, don't use too much. Brothers use only one ten thousandth of this amount. Wow, it's really good. Synthetic beef pellets without a dash of beef. With only the trimmings from frozen meat, frozen chicken, soy-based protein meat, and condiments like sugar, salt, monosodium glutamate, spices, and common food additives, they can be easily made by yourselves. For synthetic steaks, puree large chunks of meat, add catalysts, and leave it to stand for a period of time. Then use the usual mix of sauce to color the steak. A qualified steak is complete. There are also synthetic peanut milk, synthetic honey, synthetic bird's nest, synthetic crab paste, synthetic pearl milk tea, and so on. The variety of food production processes is an eye-opener. The video of this Chinese version of Breaking Bad received more and more views and a growing number of Chinese netizens said they felt that they had been fooled by the food in the restaurant. Never dare to look straight at a roadside stall again, they wrote. Never eat out in the future. Mom urged me more than a decade not to dine out, yet I didn't quit takeout. But a few videos of Shin Jefei helped me quit. The blogger quickly gained a large number of followers by producing food content mentioned earlier, gaining nearly 6.5 million fans within a month and later rising to nearly 9 million. As the discussion of black technology in the food industry intensified among Chinese netizens, it drew a lot of attention from official Chinese media, including China Food News. 
China Food News released two videos criticizing Xin Jiefei, accusing him of selling anxiety, talking about toxicity without reference to dosage, promoting low price guilt, and spreading criminal practices. So three months later, a video of the blogger's conversation with the video platform's customer service surfaced online. The platform's customer service came to him saying that his videos had recently been reported by many netizens, hoping that he could adjust the direction of his work, meaning to stop making these synthetic food videos and do something else. The blogger refused, asking the other party, is the work against regulation or the law? Or is the work unethical? Following some arguments, Xin Jiefei voluntarily canceled his account and by the evening of September 28, 2022, his channel was no longer searchable on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok. What happened to him, the Chinese version of Breaking Bad, reveals the root of the CCP's inability to solve the food safety problem. This blogger has offended the interests of many in the food industry. Many secrets have been revealed and the impact on society has been enormous. He exposed the negligence of Chinese government departments including the food industry, government regulators, and the Food and Drug Administration. In other words, he pissed off too many officials and businessmen in the Chinese communist system. There is a common ground between the red government and the companies in the pursuit of profit. Various chemical additives, preservatives, etc. are unspoken secrets in the Chinese food industry and are condoned by the CCP under its legal framework. Local government departments support food companies in maximizing their profits and often when companies are exposed for various reasons, relevant officials are only punished with some very minor career reshuffles or they're even reinstated to their original positions after a period of time. This is the underlying cause of the vicious cycle of food safety problems. The fact is that the Chinese people are aware of all of this. Even though the problem of food is related to the safety of every household and has spread across the board over the years, it seems that the Chinese people have become desensitized to it. But even so, the agony of unsafe food still weighs heavily on the so-called patriotic sentiment.